environmental right action, you know, supported communities to take um, legal action against Shell and all the other multinational corporations flaring gas in Nigeria. But they don't, we didn't do this case against the corporations alone. We had to include the states. The Attorney General of the Federation and the Chief Law Officer of the Federation and NNPC as the government arm that is in representing government in the joint venture relationship with the corporations. Now, with this, even more than six years now, because we got judgment on November 4, 2005, that declared gas flaring illegal and ordered Shell to stop gas flaring in Eurican community of Delta State. From 2005 till date, gas flaring continues. Because, and government continues to negotiate with the corporations on terminal dates for ending gas flaring. Why is it like that? Because when we got that judgment, it created a lot of problems that just and other corporations began to tell government, well, we are not stopping gas flaring because you are not providing your own counterpart funding for us to put the facilities that we gather these gas. Which would have been a different thing if government was only there to regulate. Okay? Now, this has led to when we thought there are two critical laws for me that we have been part of, part of the process of bringing them to be in this country in recent times, which has not been. The Gas Levy Prohibition and Punishment Bill, 2009, and the Petroleum Industries Bill. Okay? Now, these are documents, these are legal processes that we were part and parcel of making. Just why were we at the front runners of trying to see these laws come to be? Because we thought that these could hey, help to you know, bring to bear or at least regulate the issue of corporate accountability. Okay, now the gas levy prohibition and punishment bill, you know why it, 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 it was killed? Because at a joint session, public hearing, by the National uh, Senate Committee on Oil and Gas, Petroleum Downstream and Upstream, I presented a copy of the judgment in John Aguemre against Shell to the committee. And the committee there and then agreed that gas flaring had already been outlawed by a court judgment because there was no counter judgment to that and there is still no up to date. Now, but you know where that ended up was Senate passed their own version, waiting for the House of Representatives to pass their own version so that they can be concurrent on the bill before harmonization. <coughs> the oil majors moved in swiftly to the House of Representatives leadership and just used a simple argument that logically stood on his head to say that, look, if you outlaw gas flaring in this country, all the facilities that we are putting in place as a clean development mechanism project will not earn carbon credits under the Kyoto principles. But they did not, our legislators at the House of Representatives did not ask this question. What you are doing now, the you know, facilities you are putting now, do they meet the requirements of the Kyoto voluntary, Kyoto voluntary mechanism? Do they meet it? Because there's already a subsisting court judgment that had criminalized your action. And you're still claiming money for a criminal conduct. Okay? But because they are all in it, embedded in it, you know, that argument somewhat sells true. Although, whether we believe it or not, the WikiLeaks reports that later, you know,
came up, showed Nigerians why the National Assembly, under the leadership of Dimej Bankole, did not pass that bill. Because there was gratification. Okay? Now, this, you know, brings up to issues of challenges in the stride on corporate accountability. The obstacles that can be met along the line. You can do all the best that you think as an activist, you know, as a group, you can do, but it is easy for you to be frustrated.